Hi friends! I'm in my garage today to restore the cylinder head of my Volvo V70 2.5T. Now, like I've mentioned in my previous videos, I've already taken this cylinder head to the machine shop to get it resurfaced, but I'm still not done with it because today I want to replace the valve seals, I want to grind in the valves and I want to measure the valve clearance so that everything's nice and clean again. Now, of course, the first thing I want to do is remove the valves. Now, the first thing I'm doing is compressing the spring so I can go and remove the collets and then I can remove the valve, but I'll show you a little close up in a sec. Now, for those of you that have never seen this before, the valve itself is being kept in place by this spring and then you got these little collets that go around the valve stem that secure everything. And if you're doing this yourself, make sure that you're not switching up the placement of the valves. So I use some cardboard to sort everything so I can put everything back in the same place it came from. Well, that was easy. Now I just got to repeat the same process 19 more times and then we got all of the valves out. And there's valve number two. Balls. <laughs> I've now removed the valves from cylinder one so now I'm gonna go and do the rest and then I'll get back to you. I have now removed all of the valves real quick and now it's time for me to remove the valve stem seals and you can see them sitting right there. By the way on this specific cylinder head the valve springs used on the inlet and the outlet are the same but that's not always the case but you can easily check it on a Volvo engine by the colors that are painted on there and these are the same for all of the valve springs but check that before you throw everything together. <laughs> Alright now on to removing the valve stem seals and I'm just using these stem seal pliers to do that. And these want to come out so easily. There it is. I don't know if it wants to focus, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's the seal. Well, luckily these aren't stuck at all, but if they're stuck, sometimes using a heat gun for a little bit can help. Now let's turn this cylinder head upside down so I can go and grind the valves because that's the next step. All right, now it's time to grind the valves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some paste on the edge of the valve. And then I'm going to grind it into the valve seat to prevent leaks later on. By the way, I always like to grind the valves by hand and you could also use a drill for this, but I think it's pretty relaxing to do this, so <laughs> I enjoy it. And now that valve seat's all nice and clean. 
And by the way, you can clearly see the difference between the valve I've just grinded and the one I'm going to do now. Oh, and by the way, I am pretty lucky because I got this cylinder head clean. So this side of the valve is really clean too, but sometimes there's a lot of residue on there and this tool won't stick on there. And then you gotta clean this first, but you can easily sand it and then this will stick. So if you're running into troubles, try that. By the way, after grinding, you really gotta make sure that all of the grinding paste is removed. I'm going to go over this with some brake cleaner too, because otherwise you'll get the paste on the valve stem and then you'll grind into your new seals and then it will leak oil again and everything. So make sure to clean it properly. I'm done grinding the valves and that looks super pretty. Now let's go and install the new valve stem seals. And I'm going to do that by using a little 10 millimeter socket because that fits perfectly over it. If your fingers are too thick, you can also use a screwdriver to put it in place, by the way. By the way, for some cylinder heads, it's better to use a seal protector when installing the seals so you don't damage them and cause leakage later on. But in my experience, and I've done quite a few of these cylinder heads in the past, you don't have to use a seal protector when installing these for this specific cylinder head. So that's why I'm not using it because I've never had any problems with it even after years. So that's good. <laughs> By the way, don't you think it's funny that my very first YouTube video, which was an extremely bad video, was me replacing the valve seals on exactly this type of cylinder head. And now I'm redoing it and I, I'm hoping that this video is better. My first, first video kind of sucked, but yeah, I tried. <laughs> Last one. Perfect. And there you can see all of the new valve stem seals. All right, we got all of the seals in place. So that means we can now go and reinstall the valve so we can go and measure the valve clearance. Now I'm just going to reinstall the valves the same way I've removed them with this tool. And to put these little collets back in place, I'm just going to put some Vaseline on the inside so that they stick to the valve stem and then I'm using a screwdriver which is magnetic to put it in place. 
if you know what I mean. As you can see, the collets are in place, so I can now go and release the spring. And that's one valve in place. This is always super time consuming and my least favorite part, but um, yeah, it's gotta happen. Oh, and by the way, when you're working on these inner valves, you can use a lashing strap so that the cylinder head doesn't tilt and fall on the floor or something. <laughs> First half of the cylinder heads all nice and done, so now it's time to reinstall all of the valves on the other half. And I know this doesn't look like it has taken me a lot of time, but trust me, this is by far the most time consuming part of everything I've been doing this day. Luckily, after working on quite a lot of cylinder heads in the past few years, I must say I am getting a lot faster at the job. Cause I can still remember when I did this for the very first time, which was on a Volvo engine too, by the way. These little collets that secure the valves just kept falling off my screwdriver before I could put them in place properly, driving me absolutely insane. Oh, how I wish I had footage to show you guys. But look at me now, years later, actually enjoying the task. I always feel like it's satisfying to reinstall clean parts into a freshly cleaned engine. I really don't mind getting my hands dirty, but I must say that I prefer this nice and clean car work. Now, don't get me wrong, I am always relieved when I got all of the parts reinstalled. Especially when working on a 20 valve engine like this one. For those of you that remember, the last two engines I've rebuilt about a year ago both only had 8 valves, making this job a whole lot quicker. And with all of the valves reinstalled, it is now time to go on to the last task I'm going to do today, and that's to measure the valve clearance. Now, to measure your valve clearance, you want to go and put the valve tappets back in place, and then put the camshaft on there, so you can go and start measuring. All right, so once you've got the camshaft in place, you're going to use this little tool to measure the valve clearance. And you're going to measure the clearance between the camshaft and the valve tappet. And for the exhaust, it's supposed to be 0.40 millimeters. And for the inlet, it's supposed to be 0.20 millimeters. All right, 0.40 seems to slide in very easily. Yep. 
Yeah, and when I'm using 0.45, it slightly lifts the camshaft. So that means 0.40 is the clearance. So that means this clearance is perfect at the moment. Well, I've measured all of the valve clearances and somehow they're all perfect, so I don't really have to do anything, but that's nice for once. And with that, the cylinder head's all done. Next week, I'll be back to rebuild the short block and then we can go and rebuild this entire engine. For now, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time. Bye.